Hey everybody, welcome to Live at Five. I'm Ryan Lee Gilbert. I'm Paul Wontorek, and... <laughs> we have an amazing guest today. I know, who's like in the hottest show off Broadway right yes, now. Yes, we, we are going to be joined by Mr. Jack DeFalco in a little bit. Um, but first, we have He's in Torch Song. He's in Torch Song, sorry. The, the reboot, yeah, yes. the reboot in of the, Torch Song in trilogy. In the, in the, the 35th anniversary can't production. Can't wait to see it. I forgot I about the anniversary. Yeah, 35 oh, years, okay. 1982. I'm seeing it next week. I can't wait. We um, have a lot of news before we, we get to Jack. Yes. Uh, the big news of the day, and of course, you know, being a Broadway news hound, which mm -hmm. I don't really consider myself one, but we have some that work yeah, here. Yeah, absolutely. You have to use all your resources, and sometimes you just have to just walk around eyeballs. the theater district, <laughs> yeah. because what happened yesterday is that suddenly the marquee at the Imperial Theater for Carousel announced our Carrie Pippridge, <laughs> and it, it is it Lindsay Mendez. <laughs> Her name went on the marquee before a release even came out. Uh, it's kind of an exciting way to announce yeah. that someone's in a show. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Just Lindsay throw Mendes, their names up there. Of course, former Broadway.com blogger, yep. Fly Girl, long yep. live Fly Girl. Uh, over at Wicked, and she um, just won a Broadway.com Audience Choice That's Award right. for a Significant Other, a play that we loved last season. And you know her from Grease, Godspell, Everyday Rapture, Dogfight. Dogfight, um, yes. She's playing Carrie, so she's going to marry Mr. Snow. And she's joining Jesse Mueller, Josh Henry, Renee Fleming, Alex Gemignani. Another little nugget of casting is yeah. John Douglas Thompson is the star keeper, which is a really fun role, a very important role to the show, um, and he was, of course, a Tony nominee for Jitney. Yeah, and, yeah just um, recently. Yeah. So this whole thing, everyone's talking about it, it's gonna be a hot show next year. It starts February 28th, opens April 12th at the Imperial Theater. And uh, keep your eyes on that marquee, because <laughs> Because you never know. Who knows what, what else will be announced <laughs> up there, I love it. The I know. singing Mr. Snow is gonna be very good. It's gonna be great, it's great, it's a yeah. great cast. Alexander yeah. Gimignani is gonna be her, mm, her counterpart her on stage. Snow. Yeah. 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 Very excited. It's going to be good. Very excited. Um, also, we have our very first bit of Tony Awards news. It is not time yet, but it is shortly coming. We found out that they will happen on June 10th, and they are going back to Radio City Music Hall. Um, the nominations will be announced on May 1st, which means the cutoff is April 26th of 2018. Um, they started uh, on CBS in 1978, and the current contract has the Tony Awards being broadcast on that network through 2026. Now, do you so, do you think now when you're on CBS, obviously it has to end, right? You know, it has a right. limited time. Yeah, because you have to move into. Are you them. one of those people that thinks like, why can't it be on like A and E and run like five hours? No, I think I think time <laughs> limits are okay. Time think, limits are good yeah. for TV. Like yeah. I mean, don't do that Sterling K. Brown cut off his Emmy speech kind of thing anymore. But mm. you know, I, I do like I do have to go to bed eventually, so <laughs> it's uh, I, think, I think the time limits are okay. Okay, so this is an interesting story. I don't know if anyone out there is waiting for a musical on Broadway starring a hologram of Elvis. <laughs> uh, maybe not. I, I wasn't mean, but, there, but there was this thing, this is a really interesting story. There's this, um, there was there was plans to make a Broadway musical budgeted 15 million to 25 million dollars, and it literally was gonna be a 90 minute show where the main attraction was an incredible hologram of Elvis. And so this company like called Pulse Evolution was working on it. And then they hired Darren Bagger, who's a Tony-winning Broadway producer. Yep. He produced Dear Evan Hansen. And, you know, he produced that Sideshow revival yes, that I love. So love. I just want to yes. always props for bringing back Sideshow to Broadway. Anyway, so he got hired by them, and he did the, the budget and everything. The creative team started finding investors. And then they, like, did something shady, and they hired Simon Fuller, and then they didn't pay some bills. Anyway, he just got awarded $524,000 wow. for, for this. But what's, here's what's interesting about this story. The technology of this is interesting. Right. Now, you might not want to see an Elvis hologram, but would you want to see a Bette Midler Hello Dolly hologram? Ah, or yeah, would yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Or, or, or a Ethel Merman hologram of, right. of, of Gypsy? I don't know. It's kind of no, interesting, really interesting, the yeah. concept of that. Matt Roden is giving me funny looks. What do you <laughs> think? Well, they did, well, they, you know, in Vegas with the Michael Jackson. Right. Yeah, that's right. They did right. the Michael he, Jackson. He, like, he transforms from, like, a child into yeah. this, and it's, I think it's, like, very emotional. I think right. I would go to a hologram production of the original cast of Grand Hotel. I, at least I, I once know a week, you would. I know you would. Yeah, could. absolutely. Anyway, yeah. so the hologram <laughs> technology is something I, it would have been interesting to see. I, totally. I don't know if we ever will see it. Um, but anyway, that's why that story sort of seemed interesting to me. Yeah, no, that's, I'm all for it. Absolutely. Okay, good. Well, it's yeah. not happening. I don't, I don't know what's happening, Matt. I don't but know. All I know is that Darren Bagger got paid. So congratulations. <laughs> Bring back Sideshow. <laughs> 
<laughs> we also have, in other news, we have a little bit more of that pretty woman casting that we're all so excited about. Mr. Eric Anderson, who I'm sure you know and love from Waitress, Kinky Boots, Soul Doctor, Rocky, Sling and Hash. Ship. Yeah, Sling and Hash absolutely. at Waitress. Um, he is joining Pretty Woman as Mr. Thompson. That's the Hector Elizondo role from the movie. Um, this, obviously, is the production that also stars Samantha Barks, Steve Kazee, Orthe, Jason Danieli, and it will be running in Chicago at the Oriental Theater before it comes to Broadway through um, March 13th, 2018. Yeah. So, and then headed to us. Yeah. So, and coming to Broadway. Welcome to the show, Eric Anderson. Andrew Rannells, somebody we love, love um, is Rannells. writing a memoir. Now, did you read that New York Times piece that he did like oh. three or four months yes. ago oh, yeah, yeah, about yeah, his yeah. father dying? Yes. And uh, yeah. beautiful, beautiful piece. You guys should look that up because I read it and I was like, oh my God, Andrew's an amazing writer. He's a great writer. And then yeah. at the time, I think they announced that he was going to write a book of essays. Well, now he's writing a memoir. So I don't know if this is in lieu of the book of essays or what it is, oh, but it's going to be about growing up gay in Nebraska, all his struggles when he first came to New York, of you know, sort of mm -hmm. launching his career. Of course, you know him from the Book of Mormon, Girls, Falsettos, Hedwig, Hamilton, so many great things. Yeah. I can't wait to read this book. I love it when he goes on talk shows and talks oh, about yeah. like, for being from Nebraska. He's so eloquent, and yeah, and charming, absolutely. and a great writer. I can't and wait. And look up that essay if you haven't read it. Yeah. It's really great. I'm pre-ordering on Amazon. Kathleen Turner is God, everyone. Yes. <laughs> An act of God is going to be playing at the George Street Playhouse in New Jersey, and Kathleen Turner will be playing the Lord Almighty. Um, this is the David Jabberbaum play that was on Broadway. Um, it's directed by David Saint, and it'll be playing November 28th through December 23rd at the George Street Playhouse. And this is the role that was played originally by uh, Jim Parsons, and then Sean Hayes took over the role when it came back to Broadway, and now Kathleen Turner. So, yeah, God, God is no, a, I, no, no woman. I think, bro, but the first I think of all the amazing women that could do it. Absolutely. That I, I love this show. I, I think it's a show that plays so well. I would love it if it came back all the time. Would you watch a hologram it. of Ethel Merman doing it? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, also on the site, uh, Mr. Matt Roden, the voice behind the cameras, uh, did a great red carpet challenge it's at the so time in the funny. Conways opening, really testing everyone's knowledge of time zones, which is hilarious it's because so good. does anyone really know anything other than the time zone between New York and California? No. Three hours. That's what I know. That's all I know. Um, sometimes London, sometimes five, sometimes six. I've heard it's I get six. Confused. I always think I don't six. know. Sometimes I think it changes. So that's on the site. Watch that video. <laughs> like the there are lost. photos of the Color Purple Tour. Yes. We have the exclusive, oh, exclusive. on those. Yeah, absolutely. So they're beautiful. Uh, Miss Betsy Wolf of Waitress is our latest character study. Mm -hmm. That great series you guys all love. And by the way, speaking of Waitress, happy first show to Mr. John Cullum. Yes. Who joins Congrats, the cast of Waitress sir. tonight as Joe. And also, yes. happy opening to Bruce Springsteen. The I never boss. thought we would say that. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. But happy opening night. Uh, he's one block away, so you know what? I'm not going to walk home that way because it's going to be packed. <laughs> it's going to be mad. It's going to be mad, a madhouse. Uh, you know, they're selling, they're, they have separate souvenir merchandise stands in the alleyway around yeah. the, from I mean, the theater. I, I get it. So you can buy, actually, yeah. you can go buy a shirt and tell and your friends tell you saw it. just tell everyone you saw it. You don't have to go inside the theater to buy a shirt. That's what we all here have to do. So, <laughs> so that sounds like a plan. Anyway, so uh, happy opening, Bruce. I know you're watching. Congrats, sir. So who's um, going to be here when we so come back? So when we come back, we'll be joined by Torch Song star Jack DeFalco. We'll see you in a bit. Harvey Fierstein's landmark play Torch Song Trilogy is back. Renamed Torch Song, the Tony-winning piece about family, love, and being a drag performer in the 70s stars Michael Urie and Mercedes Rule at Off-Broadway's second stage. We headed to the rehearsal room to talk to Fierstein, director Moises Kaufman, and the cast about the new production. It's a play about uh, um, a young man coming to age. Uh, he's a, he um, is someone who has a belief in what kind of a life he has what kind of a life he wants it to be. Um, he has to make what he has into what he wants it to be, and that's a lot of hard work for anybody. I'm shocked at what a prophet Harvey Firestein was, that he knew in 1980 where we were going, where we were headed um, with marriage and uh, families, gay families, that he knew that, and that at the time, he was thought to be so radical to feel that way uh, has been very eye-opening. It's a story of a man who decides what kind of life he wants to have and then proceeds to go out and get it and make it for himself. It's a love story. It's kind of a tragedy. 
Uh, it's a drama, but it has the comedy that, that only Harvey can bring to something like that. I mean, the guy, every time he walks into a room, the entire room lights up. Everyone's so comfortable around him. He has all the answers, but he lets you find them yourself. Harvey's a man with, with more love to give than one could possibly receive. And uh, you feel that every time he's with you. Torch Song centers on the character of Arnold Beckoff, a diehard romantic who is a torch singer and a drag queen. The character is both of his time and way ahead of it. Arnold, my character, is a drag queen. A drag queen in 1975. Not a 2017 RuPaul drag queen. This is 1975. That kind of expression was uh, dangerous. Anytime a human being um, steps out of what is expected and what is traditional and steps into something that is new, that is daring, and that reflects his own or her own experience in a way that, cu that, that cuts new ground, is timely any time. I think why it's... Time is running out to see War Paint, starring two-time Tony Award winners Patti LuPone and Christine Ebersole. Now through December 30th only. The New York Times says these deliciously paired Broadway legends are knockouts. These are two star turns for the ages. Don't miss your last chance to see Broadway's once in a lifetime event, War Paint. He is starring as David in Torch Song, playing off Broadway at the Tony Kaiser Theater. We are joined by Jack DeFalco. <laughs> welcome, sir. Oh, I think Look at that. You. Round of applause in here, right? Standing Studio out. welcome. <laughs> um, so, first of all, congratulations Thank on you. this amazing opportunity. You, you have had you've had an incredible couple of years, like w with projects from. I mean, you were on the OA on yeah. Netflix, yeah. and you've got Mercury Fur. You had Yen. You made your Broadway debut in Marvin's Room, and now you are a piece of a part of one of the best pieces of theater. Yeah. I think for a lot of people, how yeah. how are things going downtown? It's amazing. I mean, uh, in particular with Torch Song, it's just it's such an honor to show up every day and work in the graces of Moises. Kaufman and yeah. Harvey Firestein, of course, Michael Yuri and the Mercedes, Mercedes you know, just graces just, yeah. us with her <laughs> light every yeah. day. It's God, it's amazing. Right. It's it's really so great. I mean, for tell us, um, for anyone who isn't familiar with Torch Song, tell sure. them a little bit about who David is and how he fits into the world of this play. Sure, sure. So uh, David is the adopted son, uh, who is also gay, and he kind of tries to throw light upon, you know, uh, obstacles that Arnold, who right. the entire story played by followed, Michael Yuri, played yep. by Michael Yuri. Uh, encounters throughout the piece. Right. Uh, he's kind of a comedic character, but he also has a side of seriousness to him, who yeah. tries to ground the uh, relationship between him and Ed. Right, and so this was Ward. this was an originally yeah. a when it was on Broadway, it was a big, it was a three act piece, Torch Song trilogy. Yeah. And now you've you've condensed it down condensed to about it. like two two hours and twenty minutes. Or yeah, so. something like that. Um, and yeah. Harvey did all of that, right? What yeah. was it like to have you know Mr. Harvey Firestein? altering his work to fit, you know, this production and you guys. Uh, <laughs> My <and just it's laughs> incredibly humbling experience. Yeah. It's I mean to have that man in the room. Uh, yeah, what is that like to he he's just all joy. He he loves the work. He believes in every one of the actors that he has there. He believes in the director, he believes in his script and and he knows that it needs to be out there. Mm -hmm. And for, just to have him there, the guy who originated Arnold Beckoff, it's it's incredibly intimidating, but yeah. also, also just, <laughs> but also just a master class, I yes. can assume, right? Yes. Like this is a once in a lifetime chance to be, you know, to work with and study under somebody like Harvey. Harvey, yeah, and of course Moises. I mean, Moises is just an absolute directorial genius, right? You know, the things that he's done and how he's orchestrated this entire show, including with the set and, you know, the actors offering up the show. It's 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 really great. Yeah. How familiar were you with the piece before you got involved with this production? I've never read it. I mean, I, I read it when I uh, got the appointment mm -hmm. uh, to come in and meet everybody. Uh, but that was my first experience with it. And the second I read it, you know, we were talking about earlier where you just, you read the entire thing and then you flip back to the front because right. you have to reread it again. And it's so cool with this piece because you can keep reading it and keep finding new things that you, you absolutely love about it, especially mm -hmm. with the characters and and how it was written so long ago, but yet it's so modern, right? And it's so present, and it still has that weight that it's that it's always carried with with th throughout, you know, its lifetime. Right. I know Harvey said something interesting the day um, that you all met the press to sort of preview the show. Yeah. He said that he wishes it was sort of like just a 
a moment in time that he was sort of capturing, but it continues to be so relevant, okay. and a lot of the same fights are still being fought. Yeah, we're still is fighting. That, is that sort of energy behind all of you when, you're, when you've been rehearsing the show and putting it up? Like, do absolutely. you know, uh, like, can you feel what a part of a cultural moment it still is? Oh, absolutely, every day. I mean, every day when you're, you know, working on, uh, you're going through these pieces, you, you still encounter characters. These characters are still people who are still alive and still right. relevant, and, and you, you encounter these people every day, you know, people who don't understand or people who, who put hate before love, and, and it's unfortunate, but yeah, we're, we're, still, we're still fighting that fight. Right. And what is it like working with Michael Yuri? He's fantastic. We love Michael Yuri. Here. Oh, everybody so loves <laughs> Michael Yuri. Yeah, what's it, what's it like having him be your dad? God, it's amazing. <laughs> Could not have picked a better dad. Right. You know, he, he is just so brilliant. I mean, every, every day, I mean, I'm not, I'm not in the, the, the first part of the show, but I sit there and I just watch him. Mm -hmm. he, it's, it's, it's like, he, he's like a drug. You know, he gets up there and he just knows how to, how to, how to present this, this such a, a large story to just so many people and really have them connected to it. Yeah. Have that emotional bandage, you know, with them. And, and I've learned so much just with comedic timing and, yeah. and you know, the physical uh, comedy that he does. Right. That it, it's just, it's not around anymore. And, right. and he just, he masters it. And it's so cool to watch someone like that do something different every night, but just land the same beats every second. It's... God, it's do you guys profound. have father son bonding days? Very on much. Your <laughs> so we like to go to Red Poke. Okay. Red Poke. Absolutely. Little uh, plug for them. <laughs> well uh, done. Yes. Uh, so yeah, we, we like to do that. We always go to the rooftop and eat lunch and nice. we hang out. You know, I mean, now that we're done with rehearsals, we right. can. Uh, Congrats. Thank you. <laughs> we can actually go and, and spend some time. I mean, now it's getting colder, but if there's right. some warmer days, we'll go to the park. Absolutely. <laughs> no, that's great. Um, I want to talk a little bit about. So you um, you you're from Stormville, New York. Yeah. Right? Is that it's up near? I've been to Hopewell Junction. Yes, I think it's right near, near there. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and did you? I think I read somewhere that you didn't really get involved in theater until you were like 10, 11 years old. Mm -hmm. What correct. was the? What sort of prompted you to get interested in this field? So when I was in fifth grade, this is around the time when my father had passed from cancer, mm. and I was looking for more of an outlet. And uh, my music teacher, Mrs. Banda, told me that I should audition for the the fifth grade musical, which was The Pied Piper. Oh, okay. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I did it, and I landed the Pied Piper, my first big break. <laughs> and I did it, and it was just somewhere where I could be free, emotionally liberated from all this crap that I held on to. Yeah. And it was addicting. It was so totally. just to walk out on stage and be somebody else, you know, take on an entire different story, walk in somebody else's shoes. It really gives you this advantage to be able to look at different facets and mm -hmm. justify different things acting as a, a craft it allows you to look at other people right. and and have to justify their actions so that you can make sense of them to yourself and that was always so fascinating to me yeah and so you you made your new york debut in mercury fur right, right. like that was but in every mm -hmm. it seems like every project you've been a part of since then mm -hmm. has it always been a piece that really sort of pushes an envelope in some more of, sort of way or is it challenging Absolutely. forces you to sort of look back do you pick those things or do you audition for those things like seeking that out yeah. or does it just sort of happen to be? I think it's a combination of both. I mean, you can always go to an audition room and really want the part and not get it. Mm -hmm. But I, I would never attach myself to something that I really feel like I couldn't commit and that if I thought there was another actor who could do better, I wouldn't. Right. Uh, uh, gotcha. Uh, yeah. But, but, you, but you're, you enjoy that kind of work that like... Yeah. Pushes any something. any yeah. any part that I take on, I try to push the envelope a little bit further, j dig a little bit deeper, try to, you know, I, I want to leave the theater every night being emotionally drained and just a wreck and right. go home and so just. So if you're sleep. not exhausted, so if I'm not exhausted, you know you didn't do your and job, needed right? for a therapy yeah. appointment, <laughs> I am right. not doing my job. Gotcha. <laughs> All right. Well then, I, well then, you've chosen work that would help along. Yes. That. Yeah. Yes. Very much. Uh, you made your Broadway <laughs> debut in Marvin's Room. Yeah. You got to work with Lily Taylor and Janine Garofalo. What was that experience like having one of them play your mom and the other your aunt? What, Amazing. Was I it mean, just? Did you just learn from them every yes, day? Yes. Yes. I mean. I, I, that's that's another thing I love about theater so much is that you you can go into a room and it doesn't matter if you're 50 you've been doing it for 50 years you mm -hmm. still walk into a room and you still can learn so much and you're constantly reminded of that when you're jumping from project to project it's you walk into a room with all these different actors yeah and they all have different approaches and they all have different uh, uh, studies and and 
you watch him with Janine and and Lily. Lily is one of those actors where she he's, just he's stares incredible. you and just enters your soul. Yeah. And it's yeah. just like you, you, you kind of feel invaded, mm -hmm. you know, and you just immediately feel vulnerable because you always every actor has those nights where you walk on stage and you're just like I'm kind of not there, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I I feel a little little out of it, but walking on stage with Janine or and Lily, it, it, they they look at you and you're just there. You're yeah. there with them. You're there in that hospital room. You're there in that small townhouse. You're it, it, you're just immediately transported to that time, and it's just such a blessing and such yeah. an honor to be able to share that stage with two people who could just do that. Absolutely, you know, it's some, somewhere where I aspire to be. You yeah. Know? What was the what did the the night you made your Broadway debut when you opened Marvin's room? What was that night like for you? What what was going through your head? How were you feeling? I cried a lot. <laughs> yeah. I did. I That's did. I did. Totally it was such an emotional experience for me because since fifth grade, when I when I found theater, that that had. That was my dream. Mm -hmm. That's where I knew what I wanted to do. That's where I wanted to, you know, throw myself and and to be standing on a on a Broadway stage, you know, at twenty one. Yeah. It's part of it, a class, part of a an iconic play. Yeah. With two incredible actors, uh, three incredible actresses. Yeah. With such a you wholesome and, role and, right. and just, you know, you, where you feel like everybody has your back. It's, it it's it's amazing. Right. It's it's so. Is there, do you find yourself, are you the type of actor where when you're working with these incredible people like Michael Urie and mm -hmm. like the ladies we mentioned, do you find yourself to be a little bit of a thief where you take like lessons that you learn or do you do you go to them and say, you know, do you have any advice for going, what's your method in terms of if absorbing not, from your... If I'm not feeling something or something doesn't make sense to me, I'll usually bring it to the director first because the director is the painter of the entire mm -hmm. uh, piece. But if there's a joke that's not landing, because I'm, I, I, I normally don't do a lot of comedy. This is right. the, the first real, you know, there's there's punchlines and you're waiting yeah. for laughter and, you know, that kind of and David stuff. David gets a lot. David gets. David, David has a handful <laughs> of does, moments yeah. where he just he has gets, to wait there and just. He gets great stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, yeah. So so if I if I ever don't hit that that mark, I'll bring it to Michael and Michael is just like try it this way and then I'll do it and then it's just explosion. Mm -hmm. So that's that's kind of the approach that I take. Um, just to constantly keep learning from people who just have been doing it for so right. long and who just have mastered this art, you know, especially of comedy, which is great. Which luckily I, I've had the, you know, the oh, having the Michael Yuri, having right. Michael Yuri to present. Yeah, like and then your... I've also just wa walked from uh, Janine Garofalo and Celia mm -hmm. Weston, where I got to see how they did it, you right. know, and then bring those pieces into this puzzle and see where I could fit them in. Right. Did yeah. did reading Tort Song for you? I remember when I first read it, it kind of sent me into a historical deep dive a little mm. bit just about that time and where yeah. have you done any of that at all like, yeah. since being a part absolutely i mean it's one of those shows where it's hard not to when you when you look at this time period and you look at this show and where it takes place i mean in the 1970s arnold's a drag queen mm -hmm. like it's not a rupaul's right. drag like, queen right, 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 right. this is this is it, it was dangerous to be a drag queen mm -hmm. you absolutely. know this this is something you can walk outside and you're dressed as a woman and people don't like that there's a character in the show who gets brutally murdered murdered right. just for loving just just for trying to find you know, some balance in his life. Mm -hmm. And I, and you know, that's, that's still happening today. Right. Unfortunately, it's still happening today, but it's still, it's still something that you, you, you see and you hear and it's something that hits every single night. I mean, it doesn't matter if you've seen the show as much as I have or mm -hmm. read the book or read the, the, the script as much as I have. It still hits you every single time. Right. Very what's hard. What's something, is there a part of David that you, that you relate to or something that he's taught you? Or yeah, what, what's been something interesting for you to work on while finding your David? So David is a very, he's a very dark character. I mean, David, David used to prostitute himself when he was 14. Mm -hmm. he, he bounced from home to home to home uh, looking to, to find a family and he's gay and he doesn't care that he's gay and, and this, this is who he is and if anybody who doesn't like that, they can... You know, yeah. shoe. Half off. Yeah. Yeah, 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 thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, working on a character like that, somebody who's come from such a dark background, mm -hmm. but is so happy and is so appreciative of being in the, the presence of honest love and support and, and having that, you know, structure, it's, it's, it's so fun to work on. Because yeah. you still find little, little pieces where you're just like, wow, that's amazing. And, and you... You look at the relationship between Arnold and Ma, which is not healthy because Ma doesn't really accept the fact that Arnold's gay. But right. you, but as David looking at it, it's still a family, you yeah. know, which is something David never really had. And how is it working? I mean, I adore Mercedes Rule. I think there, there is, I think a lot of us that feel that way yeah. about Mercedes Rule. Yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> but what is it? Is there? 
what what's it like to be working across from her and just to be to be sharing those moments with her? It's because she's just stunning. She's she is so good. She is, yeah, she is she so is. great, and she's always so present. And she's one of those the, those people where she she still gets nervous before she goes on stage. Mm-hmm. You know, that's something that never that never leaves, and it's very it, it it's 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 good to see that. Right. You know, to see someone who's won an Academy, who's won a Tony, who's been in all these beautiful films, and and still get nervous before you go on stage. It's 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 reassuring. Mm-hmm. But with her, she 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 puts all that crap to the side. She walks out on stage and she just embodies this tremendous s- role, that you, you which know, she does with amazing. everything. Yeah. She's one of those people who can just pick up a piece of paper. It doesn't matter what it is. And if it has just two lines it. on it, it'll be a meaty, <laughs> in-depth character. Right. And that's what she gives every night. And it's so funny. You can throw anything at her on stage. You know, mm-hmm. I've done I've done some things where I've tried some things, and she'll, and she'll just be totally just in character. Pick it up and and just play ball with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And it's so and it it just gives you that freedom. You know, to work with Michael Yuri and Mercedes are the two people who just work with anything. Right. You know. And I know that. I mean, these are it, it's exhausting. You know, like at the end of the day, you said if you're not super exhausted, mm-hmm. you feel like you haven't put. Mm-hmm. If you haven't embarrassed you, yourself, you that's what Harvey said. If you, you haven't embarrassed it. yourself in this show. You're not doing it right. Wow, like that yeah. is a great piece of advice. Yeah. Yeah. How do how does Jack decompress? How do you how do you chill out when you're not needed up on stage and doing that? Well, I love to sleep. Okay, yeah, sleeping is a lot of <laughs> fun. A lot of green tea. Restorative. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of green tea. I also love to meditate. I try to do that every single day. Mm-hmm. Um, but after after a show, this one in particular, it's great to be in this family because we're all family. Everybody part of this cast in between. It, we're all we're all very close with each other. We've all very much bonded. So it's it's one of those things where you just step off and you just hug everybody, and right. everybody's happy to be there. And we're so glad that we did it. And you know, to 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 tell this story to people who really want to hear it, and and you just know you're affecting people. Like we've we've had uh, in, encounters on stage where we'll be bowing. Say, yeah, how have your audiences? People been? are screaming thank you at the stage, mm. and it is so emotionally, it, it's so fulfilling because that's just that's everything I wanted to do. Right. You know, as an actor, is I wanted to affect people, and I wanted to to show people different characters, and I and I I wanted people to recognize themselves, mm-hmm. and that's what I really feel people are taking away with this. They're seeing themselves, they're seeing people that they know, they're seeing, you know, their family, and they're relating to it, right. which is what I really think is needing to happen. I feel like people really need to understand, mm-hmm. you know, this is about love, and yeah. love is the only thing that that is going to get us out of this pit that we're digging yourself further into. Totally. And are you a fan? Do you like to interact with audiences post show, or are you? Yes. I know. I mean, you can be exhausted, yeah. but you like to go. Oh talk my god, to absolutely! Them. I really do. I like shaking people's hands. I, I I I love hearing what they have to say, what they took away from the show, and you know, again, we have more people who come up right. and say thank you, and and it's really we're thanking them, mm-hmm. you know, for showing up, and and it's it's great. It's it's really great to see some people and. You know, see what they they get from yeah. it. and I know like it'll be so great to have so many young people be able to come see a come see Torch Song yeah. and get that experience in their lives. Yeah. And I'm sure there are a lot of other young actors that probably look up to you and sort of seeing what you've done with your career. Mm-hmm. What is what would be your piece of advice? You know, to to young people that you know aspire to be yeah. doing things like you are. Persist, persist. Don't doubt yourself. Uh, continue being you, whoever that might be, and just. Keep going at it. You know, the, the puzzle is going to come together one way or another. Mm-hmm. You know, if this is something you truly love doing, we only have one life to live, which is what I, I, I frequently talk about is something that I feel like humans tend to forget, mm-hmm. that we, we constantly take every day for granted. But we really only get one of those days. So to sell yourself off to, like, you know, doing something you don't want to do, do it. Just, just do what you love to do. Right. Because, again, we only have one of these to live. Yeah. And and since you're that's very sage. And since we, we uh, we're both at big Netflix buffs, yes. you had to pick one favorite Netflix show. Oh, what would it be? I know it's super hard. A good Netflix show. I mean, because there are so. I mean, there's there great so ones. There are so many. I know. I think I do have to. I do have to put myself in the Stranger Things camp. Stranger Things. I think that's, that's where I'd have very to be. fair. Yeah. yeah. I think I'd have to go there. Oh, uh, you know, I mean, there's this one series that just got released that I really liked. Uh, what was that? Big Mouth. No, oh. not Big Mouth. American Vandal. Oh wait! Have you seen so it? good it with, with so the dick funny. drawings. God. It's incredible. It is. It's just, and they take themselves so seriously, yeah. which makes it just that much fun. And so many insanely talented <laughs> young actors on yes. that show who are so yes. convincing. And yes, yeah. and my buddy Tucker's on that show, and it was oh, so really? good. I didn't oh, even know yeah. he was going to be on it. <laughs> I was like, yeah. hey, there he is. American Vandal is so exceptional. Yes, yeah. 
and it's it's very well written. It's and so it, well I feel like done. it really it really captures you know how how schools yeah and like it gets the high school world so well but then like fitting in it in the true crime sort of yes genre, so exciting and they take it so seriously they which do. is so comedical it's they so do. great it's great and the ending is so good I know but I know do you know what else is perfect and good and has a wonderful ending Torch Song <laughs> which is playing off Broadway at the Tony Kaiser Theater you guys open on October 19th, 19th right yeah. and you'll be able to see it through December 3rd I yeah. believe at the moment so make sure you get your tickets to see this young man right here and that incredible show. Jack, thank you so much thank for joining you. us. So happy to have you. Yeah, thank Good you. Good luck it's with an everything. Honor. And thank uh, you so much. Yeah, we'll see you guys tomorrow.